It's time once again for the cover price top 10 list. And not every book is an ultimate book. And there's a reason for that. Let's take a look up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hello, panelologists. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. Before we get started, like, comment, subscribe, do all that groovy stuff. Um, follow us on other socials, Instagram at Bronzeville underscore comics. I'm on whatnot at uh, Bronzeville underscore comics. We do sales Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Next Monday, Archie. Over 200 Archie books, including mostly silver and bronze, uh, some 10 centers, uh, maybe even a little innuendo covers, but there's a whole ton of Archie coming up. If you're not yet signed on to whatnot, you can do it by um, using the link in the description of this video. Also in the description of this video is my eBay store as well as my email. So let's uh, just jump right into the top 10 list and talk about the books. And coming in at number 10 is Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, number one, this anthropomorphic horror sensation by Patrick Horvath. Near mint copies of number one, like $70. I mean, look at this. Very expensive book. You're going to have to spend at least 50 books. Over $200 in a 9.8, over $100 in a 9.6. Uh, an IDW book, I don't think there were a lot ordered. Let's take a look at the Go Collect data. And it's solidly above 200. If we look at the, um, there are 238 now on the census, uh, 195 9.8s. And this is, this kind of intrigued me, a pre-sale of this. Uh, cover which is an homage to the Lorax that looks uh, kind of cool, but um, I read the story, it is an interesting story, it is very well done. I the art by Horvath is um, very uh, gentle and bucolic, and then the storyline is horrific, which is an interesting blend there. Um, while this book had a quiet debut, once fans found out what it was all about, they were all in and rocketed up top 10 lists and saw a healthy eBay aftermarket on the back end. Since then, it's done nothing but steadily rise in value. No different last week as a quiet storybook tale filled with murder continues to rise up the charts. Some fans believe there is an imminent announcement about this book being optioned for the screen, causing some to take another look around the internet for a copy. With nothing concrete currently out there, it remains nothing more than a rumor for now. So, yeah, rumors about optioning is uh, a, a little bit of a dangerous game to play. So I wouldn't um, really jump on that. So, but, uh, you know, this this is a book that has been very hot. The one thing I would caution about is when you take a look at the 9.8s is the idea that um, supply and demand. There are more of this. There's more than 200 copies of this book out there and more are going to be coming out. Will the um, demand keep pace with the supply let's go to number nine and number nine is an old friend spawn number one the first appearance of spawn in near mint copies i mean you can get a copy for 20 bucks in high grade there are nine nines on the census uh it's about this is a, a very much a downtrend even from post boom prices and we can see this was a book that was solidly in the hundred plus dollar range and then the boom drove it up to 250 and it's been steadily creeping down since then um and but this one sale and this sale intrigues me 270 dollars like double what it had been going for obviously auctions and fixed prices are different listen there are 11,700798s on the census that's uh, almost half of the population 6999s and 610s um are people like buying nine eights, putting, hoping to put them in nine, uh, nine pre-screen? This doesn't even appear to be any of the error variants or anything. So that was a, a healthy price paid for a spawn. Number one. Once again, Spawn lands on the list, which isn't surprising. He's an aftermarket mainstay with a bright future in front of him. While we're still waiting for more information regarding the upcoming film and could be waiting even longer, this is one of those things. It is a Blumhouse uh, production. Uh, McFarlane holds the cards because he is, you know, uh, the the owner of the IP. But I think with the right movie, he stands to make an absolute fortune 
if you have a 9.8, you probably won't make an absolute fortune, but I could see this book going up closer to $200. Let's take a look at number Ocho. And this is a recent book, an exclusive um, I Heart Skull Crusher, uh, the Alessio Zano Virgin One Per Store. No 9.8s because it just came out. $15 to $30. Um, I'm not really familiar with this book, so let's see what cover price has to say. Fans continue to pick up this one per store variant whenever they can. Reviews surrounding the book are stellar, with the community happily embracing a story that's fun, energetic, and concise. Since the book is sold out at the distributor level, distributor level and features a handful of variant covers, it's a lot easier for fans to dive in and collect this series. And for a clear number one variant to rise to the top, we track 12 copies sold, seven-day trend of 21%, and a high sell $36 for a raw copy and a current near-mint fair market value of 15 dollars um yeah maybe it's something checking out uh i'm not sure when the next issue is coming out if we take a look here the previous issue came out on march 13th so that's two weeks ago and we're looking at issue number two on april 17th so um there have been three issues ordered so far let's take a look at number seven Number seven, coming back to the list, Avengers Twilight, number one. This is the first appearance of James Stark, the son of Tony. Book in the $15 to $20 to $25 range, just south of $100 and in 9.8. If we look at the Go Collect data, there are 84 on the census, 79 9.8s. I imagine more to come. An Alex Ross cover, Chip Zdarsky story. And we could see, you know, a $56 sale for an eBay auction, $130 for a fixed price, $100 for a fixed price. So uh, it seems to be a popular book, but, um, you know, people really are not jumping on the 9.8s. Alex Ross and Iron Man got together like peas and carrots. Once this book hit the LCF shelves, it was a star. The art was a contributing factor, but fans were interested in the debut of James Stark, Tony's son. While he hadn't donned the armor yet, fans coveted his first appearance. Collectors must ship their gaze to Avengers Twilight number three to see him James put on the armor. The aftermarket is any indication the armor does, does not make the man. So they're interested in the first appearance of James. I'm looking at that Heritage Auctions Action Comics 41 and 9.2. And there's a reason you will find out at some point in the future why that makes me very upset. Um, but <laughs> the, the heritage ad that they're highlighting that book. Um, anyway, let me close that because, um, yeah, we, we'll that that's a subject for another day. And um, right now, the subject for today is Avengers Twilight number one at number seven. And we're going to go on to number six. Number six is Uncanny X-Men 213. This classic uh, Alan Davis cover with a um, cameo of Mr. Sinister. Is that really a the key significance? Is it the cover of the Wolverine Sabretooth? Um, I'm not sure, but it is. Yeah, it definitely is a great cover. Uh, $20, $25 for a Raw. It's in, I mean, look, a nine... The six just went for 185 and a nine eight for 150. Go figure. Uh, let's take a look at the go collect data. There are 3,300 of these on the census, almost 700 of them, uh, or just above 20 percent in nine eights. It's from 1987, not impossible. Uh, we can see this. This was a boom, darling, jumping from what was it like 130 dollars to 360 dollars in a blink of an eye, and it has been on the downtrend ever since. A little bit of a blip lately, but it's a book like right in the hundred fifty dollar range, right? Boom, 150, 150, 149, 120, 150. Um, and that's all this month. Currently, we have the saber tooth war playing out in the pages of Wolverine, and this book is a hell of a Wolverine versus saber tooth cover. Outside of it's a low key key featuring Minister Sinister's first cameo. Mr. Sinister is the main villain in the recently released X-Men 97. I haven't watched that show yet. Uh, my daughter and I are still trying to catch up. We're in season two of the original series. And has long been theorized as a perfect villain to battle the X-Men in live action. The Sinister itch is at least being scratched for now, thanks to X-Men 97, sending the collectors to secure a copy of the first cameo and his first full appearance. It's growing out of reach for some. 
Okay, let's take a look at number five. And uh, we are going to be back. Well, here it is. It couldn't have gone far. It's Ultimate Spider-Man number one. More on the census now, I'm sure. Let's take a look at how that has updated in the last week. $200 for a 9.8, right? $82. I just, I sold one on eBay for 80 bucks. So, um, yeah, I still have one on the PC. Let's take a look at the, uh, go collect data. So there are six, uh, this was last week. Let's see if I can refresh it. There were 616, 559.98s. Uh, that's, that is current data. Um, 91% are nine eights. And if we look at the nine eights, D, 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 um, it's been climbing, right? From 210, yeah, it's in the 210 range. It's a $200 book and a nine eight. Some people are getting it from 190, 190, 210. It's been pretty solid. Again, supply and demand. There are more than 600 nine books out there. They're, they're, I'm sure there are plenty of these, uh, sitting on the shelves of CGC, just awaiting the grading process. And um, this is like the, the sensation of the early uh, 2024 here. The book is too legit to quit, according to cover price. It won't stop popping up on the list, and that's a good thing. There are no rumors of an adaptation or gimmicky in the first appearance. It's just raw comics. That's a rare feat with books constantly popping up on this list thanks to internet rumors before falling off. Never be heard from again. Not this book, at least not yet. The ultimate universe is back with a bang. The fact that as a new book, it's been on the list week after week after week after week means that it may have some legs. When a book comes and goes, that's when I I doubt its long-term stability. Um, people seem to be wanting this story. So that is, um, you know, a, a, a good book. We'll see how it maintains value. Let's go to number four. And here it is, the first appearance of Mr. Sinister in Uncanny X-Men 221. This book is on fire. I mean, look, it's $300 somebody paid for a raw book. That this is so this is Larry. Somebody paid $300 for a raw and a $280 for a 9.8. Wow. That raw must have been stupendous looking. Uh so yeah. Uh I'd say you're gonna have to pay well over a hundred for a high grade raw copy. And let's take a look at the cover price data on this in a 9.8. Uh, this, th this did have like this peak where it jumped up from a book just out, uh, just like maybe $200. And then it went up to 300. Then it went up to nearly 600. And again, like every other book that peaked during the boom, it's been on a steady downward trend. But Somebody got a somebody. Oh, that's a nine four mixed in here. That yeah, that's that's a mistake. Um, so we'll just ignore that. But we're talking about yeah, two hundred eighty, three hundred dollars, three thirty for a nine point eight. I have a nine point eight. That's staying in the PC. We've known Mr. Sinister would be the main villain of the X-Men 97 for months now, thanks to showrunners confirming that before the series even released. We even got to spot him in the opening credits. The revitalized series is just getting started. Mr. Sinister is a villain with depth and untapped potential. Fans are beginning to clue in on that, scouring the aftermarket for his first appearance in this book. Sales have been on an upward trajectory for weeks now, and when he finally debuts, we could see another bump. Again, I haven't seen the animated series, um, but we will talk a little bit more about the animated series and its impact. This seems to be the character that's driving it the most. Let's take a look at number three. Once again, Ultimate Black Panther number one. First appearance of the Ultimate Black Panther. And this is a book trending up. It's not as expensive as Spider-Man, uh, either raw or graded. Black Panther isn't as popular overall as Spider-Man. And I don't think, I think people were less surprised when this book came out. And there are some nine eights. Let's take a look. It was 241, 216. I see if I, yeah, it's 241, 216, 9.8s. And the 9.8s are like about an 80 or $90 book. But notice there was a sale of 134. There was a sale of 210. Wow. Three, okay. Three ultimate Black Panther number ones. So that should be disaggregated. Um, 
from the list. There have been 44 sales of this book at a 9.8. So, yeah, that's, um, I mean, it, it's not quite getting over. It's like $70, $80. So, and that is, to me, a little bit concerning for a recent 9.8 because the supply is still pretty low, which means the demand is not really outpacing it. And I, th I think the supply will only increase. Um, it hasn't had the same heights as Spider-Man. It's still doing incredibly well. That was ex to be expected as Spider-Man is the most popular hero in the world. The Black Panther is absolutely spectacular with fans eagerly jumping on the bandwagon. Um, with advertising such as Wakanda Goes to War, Who Couldn't Take a Second Look? Collectors have been doing so since it debuted. Caught up in rumors of lost books and destroyed copies. Uh, that was uh, debunked, I believe. Some aren't sitting on their hands until that shakes out. Instead, they grab a copy when they can. Okay, let's go to number two on the list. And it is Uncanny X-Men 244, the first appearance of Jubilee. Of course, Jubilee, a mainstay of uh, the X-Men animated series. You know, 30 40 even up $50 for a high-grade copy. You really need this at a 9.8, just under $200. 9.6s are going to be under 100 uh, this book did go bananas during the comic boom. And it's one of these uh, books where there's anticipation before there is uh, confirmation. And we can see here, right? This book was, you know, like, uh, okay, $100, $150 book. Even up to $180 before the pandemic. And then all of a sudden it goes from like $180 to $570. <laughs> Almost overnight. And it obviously has been on this downhill trend ever since. There was a recent $230 sales. The other sales are kind of settling in just under $200. Uh, and that is kind of where, more or less where it was pre-boom. And um, Jubilee has never experienced as much love as she did during the height of the original X-Men anime series. Now that the X-Men are back, the love is coming full circle. With some fans were upset at the casting shakeup, others have embraced it, wholeheartedly putting their money where their mouth is and snagging a copy of Jubilee's first appearance on the aftermarket. Now let's take a look at number one. And number one is uh, uncanny. Number one is uncanny X-Men number 200. This anniversary issue with this Magneto costume that is, what, going upwards to $50 in a raw, uh, you know, in just uh, approaching $150 in a 9.8. Let's take a look at the Go Collect data. And this is one that's been kind of all over the place. It was, you know, under $100. It is a very minor key for this um era of x-men this was when x-men was extremely popular there are a lot of copies out there uh, a ton of people were collecting this it is a book from what is this 1985 so there's plenty of copies out there and without a big first appearance you know it, it during the boom it did get up to what over 200 dollars, and just recently sales uh in the last couple weeks 150 130 125 153 that have jumped it up from under 100 to over 100 and the reason for that is um magneto took over uh as the headmaster of xavier's school in this issue which he also did in the animated series and he also dons a pretty sick costume with a ridiculous large m on his chest like any wouldn't be guessing who he is Despite the gimmick, he appears in the same cost appears in the same costume in the recently released X Men ninety seven. That's what jumped this book as people saw the costume. I am not a big costume key guy. Um, he also takes over leadership duties in the absence of Xavier. With the show's return, this book has seen a massive spike in interest, um, and will likely remain hot for a while. I mean, again, this is not a major key, so uh, you know I wouldn't go pumping money into this this is going to be a book i mean it's riding on him wearing this sleeveless costume in the animated series so let's take a quick look at the runners up the 11 through 20 on the list 11 web of spider-man number one paco medina variant number 12 a jump up for marvel comics presents 72 um 
We also saw the launch of Weapon X Men, which sees a multiverse of Weapon X is teaming up to stop a new version of Onslaught. Uh, so there is a connection there to the um, animated series. What are the 9.8s going for $180? That's pretty healthy. Uh, Edge of Spider Verse number one, the surprise variant. We've seen that before. This is interesting. Marvel team up number one. Um, the uh, Marvel has a habit of introducing new concepts in comics books before they translate them to big screen. This is the basis of a really out there connection that a few speculators are making. A few weeks ago, the Century number four was released. No one batted an eye. The finale of the four part series was underwhelming for most fans of Century, but it did have the potential to lead to into a future storyline. In the series, Reynolds dies and his powers manifest in random individuals. One of those individuals took it upon themselves to kill all the other people to take the power for himself. He is stopped by one of these powered people, a woman named Mallory. After she defeats him, she's imbued with all the powers of the Sentry. Unsure of how to go about her new powers, Misty Knight steps in to train her, and Mallory dons the name Solaris. This premise is paired with an early rumor of the Thunderbolts, which is about Sentry being the main villain, possibly being killed off at the end of the movie. It's quite a st stretch for fan speculation. This book covers Misty Knight's first unnamed appearance. That is a stretch of a stretch. Um, this, to me, is a key... Not so much for Misty Knight, but th just that it's a Spider-Man number one. It is a book from 1972. Um, I'm still trying to secure one in higher grade. I have a couple of mid-grade copies. but um, And this is really the second Spider-Man title after Amazing Spider-Man. This predates Spectacular Spider-Man and obviously Web of Spider-Man. And this was the um, the team-up book. So it is a pretty, a pretty cool book, I will admit. Uh, Transformers number one. Uh, Void Rivals, X-Men, number four, first Omega Red. Um, his popularity nearly made his first live appearance happen in Deadpool 2. Uh, new, there aren't really any new rumors. Uh, villain list for the upcoming Wolverine game. On that list was Omega Red. Uh, this book went bananas where people were speculating that he'd be in Falcon and Winter Soldier TV series or maybe the one division, but it was, uh, could we see him in the X-Men animated series? Yes. Could we see him in live action? Possibly. But when you think back on the, the speculation that drove this book into the stratosphere during the boom, that he was going to be the first mutant introduced in the MCU. Yeah, that didn't make any sense. X-Men annual number 14. Uh, First kind of appearance of Gambit. I'm not going to get into that. If you're going to read the books now, looking back 30 years, you're going to read 266 first. Just saying. Um, <laughs> just saying. And, um, you know, Gambit is uh, the um, in the animated series is mainstay of that series. So that's pushing this book. Omega Men number three gets back on the list. Um Nothing more than a rumor still about uh, Momoa as Lobo, but this book has been just rolling along and along and along. Uh, 19 is 8 Billion Genies, number one. That was near the top of the list last week. And Ultimate Black Panther, the Boss Logic variant at number 20. So what to make of all this? I think I find it kind of interesting that the X-Men 97 animated series is moving the needle on a lot of books because animated properties have been slow dc for years has been been producing excellent animated movies and it hasn't really moved the needle that much these x-men books aren't really connected to the mcu at least not directly i mean the closest connection we have is the music playing and the the suit worn by patrick stewart in multiverse of madness um uh, you know I think it's hard to kind of put the two, the animated together. Um, but the fact that these books are are moving, and I think the the main character to focus on is Mr. Sinister. Uh, what we saw these books. Jubilee, Jubilee is was in Deadpool and gonna be a Deadpool three. I'm not sure how they're gonna use her in the future. Uh, she was a big part of the animated series. Well, it remains to be seen if they're going to really lean into her heavy in um, any uh, X-Men MCU properties. 
Mr. Sinister, I think, is the one, but it's a villain. And you got to be careful of villain keys because usually they're just in it for one film, maybe a story arc. Um, it's always going to be a strong key. But as I said with 200, he came around in 221. That book is not in short supply. The, the X-Men was probably the most popular title in comics at the time. And there are a lot of copies out there. And a lot of copies were in the hands of collectors who took care of their books. So I think it is a, uh, you know, th there's still plenty of copies out there raw uh, that that folks have. It's not a hard book to find. That being said, I would um, expect a spike if we see, and I think there's a good chance that we could see um, him in live action. If there's casting news, that might be when the book spikes. Uh, and it's still it's still a great key to have. His first cameo appearance, eh, I think that's better cover by for the Wolverine saber tooth cover. Uh, he does Mr. Sinister later does have his first uh, um, cover appearance. I forget the issue a number off the top of my head, but uh, with Madeline Pryor on the cover as well as what is the Goblin Queen. So that's I think that's a better key than his first cameo for me. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. And do you think that the animated shows are going to drive the values of books that strong? Or is that um, kind of dwarfed by how live action announcements slash castings can? Now, one thing that's true about animated series, there are going to be no set photos leaked, right? There's no, none of the actors are spied, uh, you know, on location when they're doing an animated series so they can keep the stories more under wraps. And remember, DC, basically, they're starting their universe with an animated series in Creature Commandos. So uh, and that is, you know, that was a very low key spec that not a lot of people were, were, were scooping up. Nobody was really expecting Creature Commandos to jump to the fore for DC Comics. So, yeah, let me know what you think about the books in the list below. At least we got some older books on the list, which is a little bit more interesting to talk about. Um, and it's better than having, you know, Hemogoblin as a uh, as a key this week. So let me know what you think. You can take a look at a couple of my other videos here. And this is Jim saying until next time, enjoy your comics.